Mansa Musa, the richest king in history of mankind that was forgotten. Today, by mentioning places that gave birth to the wealthiest people in the world. People soon thought about Europe or America. However, not many knew that 700 years ago, while Europe was still covered in the darkness of civil wars and pandemics, Africa, a place was attached with poverty and obsolescence. Today was being famous for its fruitful lands with the richness of Mali Empire and the reputation of the wealthiest king in the history of humankind. The King of All Kings Musiceta I, 1280-213-37, also called Musa Mansa, meaning King of All Kings or the Emperor, was the tenth king of the wealthy Mali Empire. He came initially from a noble lineage, and was a nephew of King Abubakari Keita II. He was also appointed a deputy in charge every time the king was absent. Musa inherited the throne from King Abubakari, who lead 2000 ships himself to explore the Pacific Ocean, and never returned. Musa held many titles such as Emir of Mali, King of Wangara's Mines, the Ganada Conqueror, Futa Jalan, etc. An Arabian Egyptian historian Al Omari quoted from Mansa Musa that, the predecessor did not believe in a story that the end of the Pacific Ocean was possibly surrounded by land. He prepared 2,000 ships full of men others packed with golds, water, and reserved foods enough to use for many years. He ordered his captains not to return until they had reached the end of the ocean or until all the received resources such as water and food were run out. Musa Mansa was crowned in 1312. By that time, Mali was a powerful empire captured all critical trade routes and possessed all previous areas previously belonging to the Ghana Empire and Mel as well as surrounded lands. According to the British Museum, during the reign of Musa, Mali possessed nearly half of gold from the Old World, the parts of the earth known by Europeans before that discovery of America in 1492 by Christopher Columbus. Meanwhile, the European countries struggled with famines and raging civil wars. After his enthronement, Musa operated a campaign to expand the country's border. He merged the city Timbuktu and reconstructed his authority over Gao. Based on statistics, the Mali Empire at that time included Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Nigeria, etc. Under the reign of Musa, this already prosperous empire expanded three times its current land. He also proceeded with a merger of 24 cities, including the essential commercial center Timbuktu. All the commercial routes through the Sahara Desert by that time gathered in the city of Timbuktu. The trading center of gold, salt, elephants' tusks, cola seeds, and even slaves. It was not only the important center of economy and culture in Africa, but also the center point of Muslim nations. Under the rule of Mansa, Musa Timbuktu's city was greatly developed and became a united place of humanists, scholars, and artists from the Middle East. Since the increasing growth of the empire, Musa's wealth increased as well. His income resources came from gold and salt in the country and in his captured lands. According to Times Magazine, King Mansa Musa was richer than any described person. Today, from the calculation of inflation, the total asset value of this famous king might reach more than $400 billion. Ruling as king, Mansa Musa took over the entire assets of this ancient country. Peddlers coming from far away to Mali offered their trading, and Mansa Musa got richer day by day, Kathleen Bickford Berzik, an expert in African history, shared on the BBC channel. In 1324, the outside word recognized King Musa's incredible wealth since he made a pilgrimage to the holy place of Mecca of the Muslim in Saudi Arabia. The most expensive pilgrimage in the history. Although the Mali Empire accumulated a vast tract of land and wealth, it was mostly unknown at that time. The situation had changed since Mansa Musa converted his belief to Muslims, preceded a pilgrimage to Mecca through desert Sahara and Egypt. It was a long journey of 6,400 kilometers, 3,977 miles, within a year, 1324 to 1325. Meanwhile, Musa Keita, the first carried along with him dozens of thousands of soldiers, slaves, and servants. Moreover, the queen and 500 maids were also accompanied to provide careful services for this wealthy king. By estimation, the total number of people joining this pilgrimage were up to 60,000 people, one over five of them were slaves. The crew up music carried tons of gold together with a herd of goats and sheep as preserved meals. Ibn Khaldun, a historian at that time, was told that, at every resting place, Musa treated his crews with all kinds of foods and rare confectionery, 12,000 female slaves who were in charge of carrying luggage or coats made of brocade and Yemen silk. During his journey of pilgrimage, Musa Keita was recognized as an incredibly generous king. 
He sponsored many temple constructions along the path and gave orders to distribute money for poor people in big cities. In Cairo, Mansa soon expressed his arrogance to everybody. When he was asked to meet the Egyptian ruler, Al-Malik, Al-Nasir, he refused the invitation since his acceptance would result in him having to kneel and kiss the ground and the ruler's hand. During his period in Cairo, Mansa continued to spend generously. He distributed gold to poor people in Cairo, although his action came from his goodwill. He accidentally created a massive wave of inflation which heavily impacted the city's financial system. It took more than 12 years for this nation to control the situation and revive its economy. Historians estimated that Musa's pilgrimage costs about 12.3 tons of gold, and the devaluation of gold led to a damage worth of $1.5 billion in the entire Middle East. On his way back, Mansa tried to support the Egyptian economy by purchasing back his previously given gold with an expensive price. Later, he let people purchase back golds from loan sharks to control inflation. The Extremely Growth of Mali After Returning Closing the pilgrimage, Musa returned to Mecca accompanying by many Muslim scholars, including the direct descendants of the Prophet Muhammad and the famous poet, and architect Abu S. Haqqas Saheli, who designed the Muslim temple Jingerber in Timbuktu. To complete the temple construction, Mansa Musa paid for this architecture to 100 kilograms of gold as compensation for design fees. He started to construct many massive Muslim temples with enormous libraries, royal palaces, and Muslim universities all over his empire nation. Although he concentrated on the development of Islamic belief, he established a religious freedom and freedom belief under his ruling. Some Islamic scholars were amazed by the various colorful clothes of the local people in their visits, even women here did not have to wear their veils. Education under Mansa's period was completely free and received many supportive policies. This wealthy king also founded the famous university Sankor Matsura. It attracted people coming from all over the world to enlarge their knowledge. In this period, many major cities in Mali had high standard living Sergio Domian, an Italian historian of art, an architect commented about this period. It put a foundation for an urban civilization. At its peak, Mali owned at least 400 cities and local areas along the Niger River, which contained a high population. By the late of the Mansa Musa era, Sankor became a university with full functions, which owned the largest collection of books in Africa since the Alexandria Libraries period. University of Sankor was able to construct resting places for more than 25,000 students and possessed one of the world's largest libraries with more than a million manuscripts. Timbuktu became the center of commerce, culture, and trading from Hausaland, Egypt, and other African kingdoms coming for their trading businesses. The news of about a wealthy city of the Mali Empire even spread through the Mediterranean Sea to South Europe. Traders from Venezia, Granada, and Genoa soon filled Timbuktu in their trading maps to exchange goods for gold. In the 14th century, the name of Mansa Musa and the Mali Kingdom was expanded widely in the Middle East world, and attracted the huge notification of people who sketched the European map. Therefore, by the appearance of the map in 1375, Mansa Musa appeared at the center of West Africa with an image of having a seat on his throne and holding a gold bar as a symbol of his wealth. The richest person was forgotten in history. All historians today agreed that Musa squandered too much on his long journey of pilgrimage. Thanks to his journey, the king was well known by the rest of the world. Musa passed away in 1337 at the age of 57, dragging the downfall of the Mali Kingdom. This empire soon was dissolved by constant internal struggles for power. In the 19th century, the appearance of the European put an end to the Mali Empire. History of medieval world was mostly introduced by Western historians. That was why Mansa Musa was not too famous while later generations. Lisa Corin Grazios, director of the History Museum in the US, said, According to historian Ware, if the European knew about the Mali Empire and Mansa Musa at its highest power, things would be very different. The date of Mansa Musa's death was also a controversial topic between modern historians and Arabian scholars who recorded the history of Mali by comparing the reign of his successors who were his sons Mansa Makan and Mansa Suleiman. And the record of 25 years under Musa's rule, his death was estimated in 1332. Meanwhile, other documents declared that Musa planned to abdicate and resign the crown to his son, Makan. But he died on his way back from Mecca in 1325. In a record of Ibn Khaldun, Mansa Musa lived in the city of Tlemcen, Algeria, which was conquered in 1337. 
He even sent a messenger to Algeria to congratulate the winner. The richness of Mansa Musa helped to score his name written in the book, Catalan Atlas. It was one of the most important world maps of medieval Europe. Although he was very wealthy, Mansa Musa, however, spent most of his entire saving assets due to his wasteful expenditure. That's basically end of this video today. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure you hit subscribe button to follow new videos on LMT channel. Goodbye. Stop.